Hey guys, welcome to this free training, this series of five videos to help you reach the next level. My name is Bootsy, I'm an author, I wrote two books on uh, creativity, I am a keynote speaker, a coach, and really what I do is that I help uh, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, freelancers, coach, artists, creators to reach the next level by helping them to better manage their time to reach their goals and craft a vision with creativity, find solutions to their problems and overcome obstacles, and to create engaging, powerful videos to increase sales and brand awareness in the business. We are going to talk about how you can craft your vision, how you can clarify, specify your goal, and I'm gonna help you to reach your goal by doing just this, and also by helping you to better manage your time, to procrastinate less, and to increase sales and brand awareness using powerful and engaging videos. So I know it seems like a lot, it seems like uh, there is a lot to cover, but we have five videos that you're gonna receive uh, one by one. And of course, if you wanna go further, there is always more. We have a community on Facebook. We have this group called the Next Level Community. And I really encourage you to join, to have more resources. And also on my website, you'll find a lot of different ways to go deeper in each of the topics. But I think in this series of video, you can have a pretty good uh, idea, overview on the process, on my approach to help you reach the next level. So the first thing you need to know about innovation is that it doesn't necessarily mean invention. This is really important, especially for freelance entrepreneurs, uh, solopreneurs, and people who work by themselves, because you are not going to invent something crazy. And if you do, you have to know that it's really rare. In the definition of uh, innovation, if you look it up online, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's something uh, completely disruptive. There is a kind of innovation, it's called disruptive innovation, and it can disrupt the market and change completely everything, but this puts a lot of pressure on our shoulders, us as entrepreneurs. You can be innovative by uh, changing little things and have an amazing effect on your business. This is called incremental innovation, and this is something I talk a lot about in different businesses even big companies because it's widely underestimated. And the real completely crazy innovation happens one in the blue moon. There's 0.0001% of the total innovations. What is interesting for you is to understand your uniqueness and how you can tap into things that makes you unique and makes your perspective unique so you can be uh, doing things in an innovative way. So this is a trick is to not try to invent something brand new or it's all or nothing, is to do things in an innovative way. This means you can have a framework and try to change little elements here and there. For example, if you uh, take the business model Canva from Steve Blank and have the different elements of your business, you can just pick one and try to be innovative on that aspect. You know, maybe we're talking about uh, the way you're making money. So you can be innovative in the way you're making money. Maybe your business is not working the way you want and you want to innovate, which means renew yourself in the real definition. Renew yourself, doing things in a new way. You can just take that this only this little aspect on how to make money and maybe you can decide that you're going to make money out of advertising and not on direct payments from clients for example this is just a tiny example but to craft a vision to do things in an innovative way you don't have to think about something completely different and change business or invent the next technology so you have to take a step back on who you are, what are your experiences that makes you unique, your uh, skills, the, your environment, the people you know, everything that makes you uh, unique and that makes your perspective unique. And sometimes it's a little bit hard to do because we are so close to what we do every day. Sometimes it's uh, worth it to ask a couple of friends and colleagues, uh, even clients on what it is that you do that is completely unique. So of course, this is not all of it. If you want to create a vision, you also need the right attitude. I just gave you a little tip. I talked about innovation, but if you have the right attitude and you are able to explore and to trust yourself, you will be able to uh, create a vision for yourself and let your imagination wander. Creating a vision is 
also just imagining something for the future. You don't need to be a, 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 an expert in a business and marketing and sales. You don't need to be a Steve Jobs. You don't need to have a huge company to have a vision. What you need is the right attitude and to not censor yourself. And for that, I have the secret for you, which is to be able to reconnect with your inner child. Why? Because when we were kids, we had this capacity to explore, to wonder, and to not censor ourselves on the things we were saying. And most of the time we were saying stupid things, improbable things, uh, impossible things. And this is great today to reconnect with that capacity, to be able to craft a vision for later. Now this attitude and exploring in this phase, it's called the divergence phase, which means exploring stupid ideas, going in all kinds of direction and seeing later how we're going to do it. This is divergence. Now there's another phase which, which is called convergence, which is to pick one idea and to see if it's really possible. And the whole uh, trick with crafting a vision for your business is to separate those two phases. Because otherwise, you will want to, uh, to, to, to understand and to see directly the how of your vision. And this is the trap. This is when you censor yourself. When you imagine something, oh, that would be great if my business is like that in three years. And then directly you're like, ah, oh, but no, but I don't have the right connections. I don't have the right money. I don't have the money, the budget and so on. So you need to be able to separate divergence, exploring like a little kid, wondering, asking yourself questions, imagining and convergence, which is the how. How are you going to do it? We'll see that later. We'll see later. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about goals. We're going to talk about the attitude, about uh, discipline, about habits, about sales. There's so much to talk about. But there are a time to dream and to imagine. And there is a time to be able to think only about the strategy and the different um, elements that you can uh, leverage and use to reach that vision. So try to reconnect with that inner child. Use the word if. Start sentences with what if, for example. What if I could? What if I had? What if my business was at this place in three years? What if I could develop this product? What if I could help those people and help them serve them in that way with this product, with this service? What if I could have a team? What if I could live abroad and work from my computer? Things like that. And you'll see how, how to do it later. We'll see how later. One moment for vision, introspection, letting your imagination flow and dream in unlimited ways using what if. You can also use sentences like, if I had a magic wand, what would I do? If I had a magic wand, uh, how would my business look like in six months, in 10 years? Things like that. And let your imagination wander. And there is another moment to see how we're going to do it. And last but not least, you can play with inspirational factors. What do I mean by that? It's all the elements that will help you to be inspired, basically. And I see it the way we can work in three different ways. For me, there are three zones, okay? You can have genius moments, and we all have those genius moments. You know, this is when you have your best ideas, you are under the shower, you're driving, you're jogging. And I could talk for hours about that. Uh, I talk about creativity for business. So <laughs> well, I could talk one hour just about this. But you know those moments, basically. And all you have to do is to write down this genius idea. You don't know where it comes from. Just your brain sends you an amazing idea. Another zone that you have, because those genius moments, you don't have them all the time, is um, uninspired work. You are at your office, you are in front of a blank paper or your computer, and you're not inspired. You just do the work, you go through the motions uh, mechanically. And last but not least, you have inspired work. So it's not a genius moment, but you're working and you're inspired, and you get into flow, and you have ideas, and you don't know what's happening. And I believe you can recreate those inspirational moments. You can analyze and notice the different elements that are around you, that are uh, here when you are inspired, and play with them a little bit to recreate moments that are inspirational. So what are those factors? Well, first of all, there is the venue where you are working. Maybe some people feel more comfortable to work from home. Other people in a cafe, other people have to be in the office. And all the factors I'm going to talk about, they're very subjective. It's personal. It's about you, knowing yourself, what inspires you. 
okay? And the venue also can be a little bit tricky because some tasks, for some tasks you're gonna like to be at home and from, for some other tasks, you're gonna like to be in the office or in a coffee place, for example. So for me, when I edit a video and I'm talking in front of the camera, I don't like to be in a cafe. I don't like people to look at what I do. I, I feel self-conscious about it, okay? Maybe it's stupid, but I don't feel inspired. I like to be in my couch with my, uh, with my uh, earphones and to just work on the video by myself. So this is what I do. I don't try to understand like uh, what is the psychology of it. I just play with this factor. But I love to be in a cafe when I'm working on something else. Maybe it's uh, when I'm writing my book or working on something that I write, an article, I love to be in a cafe. And maybe I'm gonna go there for one hour or for two hours. So just the, I know that it's inspirational for me just to switch place for a specific task. Then there is also uh, the environment, the decoration, uh, all the things that are, that are around. We all have different tastes, obviously. The lighting, so I love to have a lot of natural light. I don't like to, to work in a space that is dark, but some people love it. Some people work at night and they love that. They feel like in, they're in the bubble and they enter this, uh, this uh, zone, this uh, flow state better. And it's, we're all different. So you have to play with that as well. There are also different senses. Some people like to touch things, this uh, kinesthetic thing. Um, I know as a magician, I used to uh, touch a lot of props. So I still love to do this, uh, to think about something. I love to stand up and touch objects, the music, the smell. Everything matters. The people you work with or you work around, you know, in the coffee place, you don't work with those people, but they're around you, creates an atmosphere and maybe it can inspire you. So you need to notice those little things. And when you notice it, just write it down. You know it's one of your inspirational factors and maybe you can uh, reproduce it another time. So be aware of all that, uh, at what time you are more efficient and on what task, maybe in the morning, the two first hours of your day are the most efficient, those are your power hours. Uh, beware of what you are wearing as well. If you're all, all the time in your pajamas, uh, working from home, sometimes it's not the most inspiring thing to do and you need to dress a little bit, even if you're by yourself and things like that. And just notice them, write them down so you can reproduce them later. So that is pretty much it, what I have to share with you. Uh, it's, I know I talked a little bit more about the attitude and the state. Uh, and less about practical thing because we're all different. We all have different businesses and crafting a vision. I didn't want to talk about strategy. So crafting a vision is really about yourself. It's really about the attitude and not censoring yourself. But I strongly believe that if you have this self-awareness on your attitude, if you wonder a little bit more, if you ask yourself more questions and different questions and let your imagination wander, and on top of that, if you are able to tap into your uniqueness and do things in innovative ways, this will help you to craft a vision, whether it's a long term or just on the short term. So have fun with that and in the next video we are going to talk about goal setting and how you can specify your vision and transform it into something that is actionable.